Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the Celtic Forever podcast. It's been a wee while for we've been on a good eight days or so, so it's good to be back. Uh, we've got John here to go over everything Celtic regarding tomorrow's game. I look back at the international games, etc., and some other news. How are you doing, John? All right, Xander, how are you? I am okay, John. It's good to be back. It's, it's the football returns for us on Sunday, which is a big bonus. Been looking forward to it for a wee while now, so we're finally here. Game kicks off at 12 o'clock tomorrow. But before we go into anything, John, I just want to have a, a wee mention. Uh, Barry Murphy messaged me on the Facebook page, the Celtic Forever Facebook page, and he tells me that the Celtic fans and the Livingston fans are going to have a minute's applause in the 18th minute for a young Livingston fan that passed away, John. Kieran Ayrns passed away. So rest in peace to Kieran Ayrns and the Celtic fans are going to, and the Livingston fans are going to be doing a a minute's applause in the 18th minute. That's a nice wee touch, John, isn't it? Ah, it's always a nice touch. Uh, was that a young fan, eh? Yeah, 18 year old he was, John. 18, yeah. I see. Is that 18? That's, that's tre- terrible, isn't it? Dreadful young boy. Um, uh, RIP to young Kieran. Uh, that's all I can say about that. Uh, condolences to his family and I hope all the, the fans in the stadium uh, respect the minute's applause, Sander. Yeah, well said, John. Well said. Uh, my sentiments too. So uh, rest in peace to the young man. And thanks for Barry for informing us of that as well. He's, he's asked us to mention it on the podcast, so that's not a problem. And thanks to Barry as well for it. He's got a lot of photographs and stuff in there, John, that he's allowed us to use on the podcast. So that's that's uh, fair enough with Barry as well. So we'll move on, John. Thanks thanks for that, Barry. Thanks very much, buddy. Um, so we'll move on. Let's get into this. Uh, obviously, we've dropped into second place in the league, John. Hint Bay after Rangers winning the day with their usual penalty. Uh, the usual penalty and a goal in the eighth minute of injury time. So they they they're back to the top, John. So it's down to what we do on Sunday. Uh, so it's now it's a very very important game, John, on Sunday. It's uh, but it's one I'm looking forward to. Aye, me as well. Why? But uh, who were they playing? I didn't even know they were playing. I forgot about it. Uh, they were playing Hibs, John. I think we 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 spoke about it on the podcast when we were giving our predictions, and both of us said our Rangers win. So. Uh, both of us were right, so um, so that that's, we knew that was going to happen anyway. We knew we were going to have to go to Livingston and win, so that nothing changes there. So uh, let's have a wee quick run through the day's results. John Aberdeen two, Ross County one, Hearts one, Kamalot one, Motherwell one, St Mirren one, Rangers three, Hibs one, and St Johnston one, Dundee two. So the, there's a wee swing there, John. We spoke in the last podcast. That we thought that Hibs would come up. Well, Hibs got beat today and Dundee won today. So there's a wee chance that Dundee could finish the top six there. Aye, absolutely. Aye, that was the two we spoke about. And uh, aye, well done, Dundee. Because yep. I, don't know, I, don't, I don't know. I don't really care who comes up, to be honest. We and whoever we have to play, we have to beat them. Every team, it's as simple as that, home or away. Yeah, that's true, John. That's true. Um, but the Hibs coming up would have been a, an extra home game. But anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll move on, John. Um, before we move on to the team news, etc., for the Livingston game and some other bits and bobs in news, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> the Scotland game, John. I didn't watch any of the Scotland games. But uh, 4 nothing against the Netherlands. And what was the final score against the North of Ireland? We won nothing. Won nothing to the North of Ireland? Aye. aye. Right, so it was two defeats for Scotland. That's quite poor, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. the old... Uh... North Irish fans, uh, we all their songs as usual, you know, singing all the Rangers songs that they sing and all that. That's, uh, I don't know. But all I can say is a big hello to all our Celtic fans in the North Island. I hope you are all doing well. Uh, yeah. That's all I can say about that. Well, say a big hello to all the Celtic fans, the genuine Irish that live there. <laughs> Yeah, well said, yeah, yeah. Hello to all the Celtic supporters all over Ireland. Uh, let's get into some news before we get into team news, John. Obviously, it's, it's no breaking news. That we all know this news, but it's Brendan with one game banned. What's your thoughts on that, John? I was expecting me, so I'm pleasantly surprised, although, I don't know, you shouldn't be speaking out against uh, officials. You know, Every manager knows that, Brendan knows that. He did it, he got a one-match ban, so I can only be thankful for that. Uh-huh. Nothing else we can say on it. He's just got to uh, take the one game ban, and he's got to take it, and me- which means he's available for the game at Ibrox. So that's good news, as you say, John. Other wee bit of news: Yang. It looks as though he's going to be going to 
South Korea, John, to play in these Olympic qualifiers. Olympic qualifiers, unbelievable. Belarus, we're going to be missing them for three games, maybe more. St Mirren, Aberdeen in the semi-final. Which is all Yang is going to be missing because he's been going to these qualifiers, John. That's no great news, is it? You know, that's no great news at all because uh, it's competition for Kuhn, isn't it? Although Kuhn, I think Kuhn would probably keep Yang out of the team now if he keeps up the way he has been playing. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's bad news, that really bad news because he's a great wee player, Yang. He is a brilliant wee player, isn't he? And he's just, I was just back from the two game ban. He's available for Sunday. But I didn't see any mention of O. Oh, being called up to the the South Korean Olympic qualifiers, John. Is, is he all injured? Is he is he okay? I've not heard anything about all for a, a few weeks. I don't think I don't think he's injured. I think he's just uh, he's just not good enough. Uh, fair enough. Okay. Well, maybe yeah. because because he's not getting a game for Celtic. Maybe that's why he's not getting a game for uh, North Korea. South Korea. <laughs> South Korea, sorry. Uh. We don't want to cause a war. <laughs> anyway. um, okay, John, we'll park out there. But it looks as though he's going to be missing vital games for us, John. Games in the split, game, the game before the split and the semi final against Aberdeen. So, okay, we'll watch our space with that one because we think Celtic are going to um, battle that one, try and get him to stay. We'll see what happens. And then all another wee bit of news is that obviously these rumours about the. 5% allocation, 5% for Celtic, 5% for Rangers. Celtic would get 2,500 fans at Ibrox. Rangers would get 3,000 fans at Celtic Park. So it's a wee bit unfair to me, but, you know, if, 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 if I keep my decision on this, John, there's nothing we can do about it. Well, what's that? It should, it should be exactly the same allocation of fans. But is it your <laughs> fault we've got a bigger stadium and better stadium? That's it. That's it, John. I could totally agree with that. It should be 3,000 each, 3,000 at Ibrox, 3,000 at Celtic Park, and we move on. But no, it's Celtic have to suffer again, 500 less fans. Aye, aye. Just keep it the way it is. Keep both sets of fans at the stadium or a full allocation. That's the only way I'd be happy. I'm not happy with that, Xander. So obviously, mm. obviously it's good to, that Celtic fans will be there, but personally speaking, I'm not happy with that at all. Let us know what you think in the comments. John's not happy with it. I'm not happy with it myself. Although it would be good to see the Celtic fans in Ibrox there. But it seems a wee bit unfair to me. But uh, tell us what you think in the comments. Moving on slightly. The last bit of news. This is the last bit before we get to the big game on Sunday. Glasgow City against Celtic tomorrow, John. Ten past four. Obviously, there's a big game before that. But that'll be an interesting watch. Celtic ladies against... Glasgow City ladies in the league, John. I think Celtic could go close to the top if they win. Aye, they're up there close to the top. I think they're only a point behind Rangers or something. But mm-hmm. aye, aye, maybe watch that. Depends how the result goes against Livingston, right enough. If we don't get a good result against Livingston, I won't be watching that because I'll not be in the mood for it. <laughs> no, no, I know what you're saying because um, I'll watch it. I'll maybe watch it myself depending on the result. But it'll be a tough one for the Celtic ladies. So good luck to the Celtic ladies anyway and hopefully they get a. Uh, a decent result there for three points tomorrow for them. All right, John, that wraps that up. Uh, quick mention on the competition. Last chance, folk, to get your entries in to win the Celtic Forever ballpoint pens in the box set there. Lovely, lovely pens up for grabs. And all we're looking for is this correct score. Livingston against Celtic on Sunday. Correct score, one guess each. Put it in the comments. And we've had a lot of uh, entries that this time, John, nearly 50 entries. So that's, uh, that's the most entries we've ever had in a competition. Aye, that's good. That's very good. Um, no long to find out who wins the pen. Uh, did we would never sell a club get a pen? Yes, it's, uh, she she texts me in the comments there, John. She got a pen. She's over the moon with it. And uh, why why not? Because they're brilliant wee collector's items, John. It's it's not just the fact that it's a pen. It's it's a Celtic Forever collectible. And it's uh, the pen will still be there when we're not. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, I, she messaged me. She messaged me, John, and she's very thankful and grateful. So congratulations on winning the pen, and then keep entering the competitions because um, you've got a great chance of winning. Although there seems to be more entries in the competition, so hopefully that that will continue, John. We keep getting plenty of entries because that's what we're looking for, isn't it? Yeah, that's that. That's that. The only other one we bit of news was Dundee United won the day, so that keeps him. Uh, they beat Wraith Rovers, who are second. 
and that yeah. keeps him four points ahead of Wraith Rovers. Wraith Rovers got a game in hand. Right, okay, so it's looking good for Dungeon United coming back up, I would, I would presume. I well, you know me, I like the Arabs. I've, that's my second team. I've always liked them. So, Dundee Hibs, proper Tim team, Dundee United. Yeah, yeah, it's good to have them in the league. They're they're always they're, they're always give they always give us a hard a hard hard game, but they always give the other team the other side of Glasgow a hard game as well, John. And that's all that's all we're looking for across the board, isn't it? Aye, maybe not a hard game against them, but they certainly put in the effort. Um. Aye, so I well, so I'm, I fingers crossed Dundee United come up. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say on that. Yeah, I like Dundee United. Yeah, okay, John. Yeah, good luck to United. Um, good result for them against Wraith Rovers today. Uh, well, let's get into the game on Sunday then, John. Let's get into it. And we'll start right away with the referee, because this is a talking point as well. Don Robertson, it's a get it up you to Celtic. There, Robertson gets another Celtic game. He's the referee man in the middle, John. Who was it? Hampton Bay Rangers when Willie Collum yeah, had a bad decision uh, against Rangers. They got him banned for Rangers games for a year. That's How right. can we know day that with these idiots, Robertson and Beaton? Yeah. yeah. Why are they allowed anywhere near a Celtic game after that? Just baffling, isn't it, John? And, and to be given one so soon after, you know, you know, the, the rollover for this is still continuing. With Brendan being banned for the game on Sunday, he's uh, he'll be in the stands. So the fallout continues for these decisions, John, and he's given a game, a game almost immediately after the Hearts game, John. So it's it's totally baffling to me. It really is. It's not just the fact that they get, they get a red card and a penalty. That's against us. That's bad enough. It's the fact that Europe as well, they could possibly have cost Celtic £40 million pounds with that cheating. Mm. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Yeah, it's not. It's not just a wee case of ah, it's nothing that happened. That happened. It's nothing. It's not like that, and it's cost Celtic forty million if we don't win that league. And just quickly touching on their game the day with their usual penalty, John. And actually, the Hib supporters groups put up a tweet, John. I'll put this up on the screen. They put up a tweet um, after Rangers got awarded the penalty of the day, and the tweet simply said, "Penalty to Rangers who had twenty minutes." So. They've actually got bets on when Rangers are going to get a penalty of the, H- the Hibs fans. <laughs> aye, it's unbelievable. I, I, I'm not interested in their games, like I keep saying, but uh, I well done Hibs fans for doing I don't like Hibs, but when it comes to playing them, I am I'm a fan of them for that in 90 minutes, you know. Uh-huh. But that's yeah. it. Okay, well, right, John, let's move on. So Robertson's the referee anyway. He's the man in the middle. We'll watch him closely on Sunday. Team news, obviously, it's good news. A bit of good news for a three change for us. Team news, Rio is obviously fit, but will he play from the start? John, we'll get into that in the one to eleven. Scales also fit. McGregor also fit, but he's been rested. He's not getting chanced on that plastic pitch. John Palmer's going to be another week or two, so he's not available for Sunday. And the Rocky, he's going to be another two or three weeks. So mixed news there, possibly. Aye, aye, it is, but uh, good that Rio's back, but I don't think he'll start. Right, OK, I don't think he'll start either. But big scales, he'll be right into the centre-half position there on Sunday, John. Aye, absolutely, he will, aye. Mm-hmm. Right, OK. Um, all right, that's the team news. Uh, that's it. It's, it's good news that Rio's back, John. It's brilliant. He's been out for such a long time. And it's brilliant news that big scales is back. He's going to be in there beside big Vickers on Sunday. McGregor's going to be fit for Ibrox. Brilliant news. You know, he's, he's actually fit for tomorrow. It's just that Brendan doesn't want to uh, risk it on that plastic pitch. So he's getting rested. Palmer, he'll probably be back for the Rangers game. But if not, it'll be the week after that. And as I say, Naroki, there are a few weeks. So I've been to the split before. Big Naroki's back. All right, John. Predicted 11. Uh, in fact, before we get into predicted 11, how do you think the game's going to go on Sunday? Is it going to be the usual attack, 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 or do you think it's uh, do you think it's uh, Livingston will come out as um, a bit of intent? They're fighting relegation, but I don't think they'll come out as way intent. I think they'll try and counter attack. I think it's going to be uh, Celtic attack, attack, and just hit as in a counter attack. It's what everything's been doing over the last few weeks, isn't it? I I, I think, don't think it's going to be any different. It's always the same game at Livingston. They'll put up a fight. They'll try and stop Celtic players going out wide. When they get the ball, they'll punt it up long. They have long throw-ins, corner kicks, try and trouble the defence. Typical uh, 
SPFL uh, team, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, John. Um, I, I agree with you. I think it'll be uh, the same old, same old winter on that plastic pitch. It's going to be tricky. They'll have it dry as well, so hopefully it's raining the more uh, to put a wee bit of water on the surface. But uh, three points, that's all we're looking for, three points. Doesn't matter about surfaces, performances, everything like that. Just get the win and that uh, means we'll be top of the league going into the Ibrox game, John. Aye, that's it. That's all we're looking at. Just looking at the win. Mm-hmm. I think we'll be focused on that. I seen I heard Brendan interrupting a guy who was talking about the Ibrox game. He says, "That's next week." Mm. Says, We're playing Livingston. Says you want to talk about that? <laughs> Aye, well, that's that, John. I never heard that. So if that's what he said, well done, well done to Brendan. Uh, um, was that wee? I don't know who the wee guy is. A wee English guy that was asking questions about England players and all that a while ago. What's that wee guy all about? Mm-hmm. Some player retired and he was asking Angie about. You know, was it Brendan at the time, I can't remember, but I thought, what's that all about? Who's interested? Yeah, no, no. You talk about the game that's in hand, and as you talk about the game that you're about to play, you don't look three weeks down the line, so uh, you, you put him in his place, obviously, then. Uh, all right, John, let's get into some betting, just very quickly with the betting, because I uh, just wanted to run quickly through this. So, Livingston 13-1-1, to one to one, the draw 13-2, to Celtic up 2-9, to nine, so hot favourites there. Moving on to the first goal scorer, both Idar and Kyogo are four to one. Matt O'Reilly thirteen to two. Dyson seven to one. Nicholas Coon eight to one. I think that's a good price. Uh, and we Jamji Forrest. He's back in the betting. Uh, he's seventeen to two to score the first goal. John um, we Forrest. It's good to see him back in the team, John, and actually playing well, isn't it? Aye, aye. He's done no bad when he's come on, James Forrest. But uh, I don't think he'll be starting the more, mind you. No, 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 no. We'll get to that in a wee second, but I don't think it was James either. I think Coon's playing outstanding just now, and hopefully that can continue. Hopefully, this international break has not um, broke up the rhythm, if you like. Uh, but we'll get to that in a wee minute. Let's continue the betting. Correct scores 2 0 to Celtic, uh, 61, 3 0, 13 to 2, 1 0 to Celtic, 17 to 2. Um, if you fancy Livingston to score a goal, 2 1 to Celtic, 17 to 2. 3-1 to Celtic, 10-1. to And your outside bet, 5 not to Celtic is 18-1. What was your prediction again, John, on the last podcast? I can't even remember. I think, it, uh, I think I think it was 3-0. Three 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 aye, it was. Aye, aye. Yeah, 13 to 2 for that, John. 13 to 2. So we'll get back to that in a wee minute, right? Let's move on. Aye. Uh, let's move on with uh, Xander's bet builder. Xander's bet builder. Xander's bet builder, John, this week. McHugh to score first, with Celtic to win 4 nothing, and over 12 corners in the entire game, John. So it doesn't need to be Celtic corners, it's uh, just total corners in the whole game. Over 12, 150 to 1, John. Aye, uh, I'll not be taking that on. That's a, that's a big... Uh, I suppose if you want to get a couple of three quid, <laughs> line of it, a couple of quid, I suppose you could stick a wee bit on it, but uh, it's a, a tough one, isn't it? Aye, aye, that's tough. Um, that's, um, you know, I can see Kyogo scoring the first goal and I can see he's getting over 12 corners or 12 corners in the game. But the 4 nothing's a stumbling block there, isn't it? But that's Sanders' bit builder anyway, John. Um, so good luck to anybody that puts a wee 50 pence on that. Uh, all right, let's move on, John. We're looking for predicted 11s. This is the uh, real back, etc., etc. What are you thinking? Uh, Joe Hart. Vickers, Scales, Johnston, Taylor, O'Reilly, Bernardo, uh, Kyogo, Maida, Kuhn. So that's a predicted 11, John. It's, uh, it looks like quite a strong team, didn't it? Even without Callum McGregor. Aye, aye, aye. I don't know if Callum will make an appearance more. I've read and says no, but you know, if he is, but he might look at it and say, Game half an hour or something, you know, getting ready for next week. Yeah. All right, all right, that's it. Predicted 11. Um, good, strong team there for Celtic the uh, Score prediction, John, what are you thinking? 3 0. 3 0. I'll say 4 0 to Celtic. Oh, right. Good for that big bet, are you? The 12 corners <laughs> and the 4 0. <laughs> uh, it would be nice if that came in, wouldn't it? But no, I'll, I'm, uh, I'll probably just stay in the house tomorrow. 
and watch the game, but I'm not going to the bookies or anything. So no, no, I don't, I don't pay anywhere anyway. It's just, uh, it's just a wee laughing that wee bit. We talking point, I suppose. If anybody that does bet, gamble responsibly, of course. Um, but 151, John. I imagine that came in and I'll put a pound on it. Anyway, um, where are they now, John? Where are they now? Where are they? Where are they now, John? Here we go. This week, we've not done this for a week or two, have we? So, Oliver Tabili. Do you remember him as a defender, John? Vaguely, I know the name. I, I kind of remember him, I. I thought you were going to say Oliver Norville Hardy, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no big Oliver. It's, uh, it is big Oliver, but it's Tabili this time. 38, 33, sorry, I can't read mine writing. 33 appearances for Celtic, zero goals. Play for Celtic between 1999 and 2002. Um, that was a wee while ago, 20 years ago, 22 years ago, John. Um, he now has his own vineyard, John. He's a winemaker, makes his own wine, African wine for that, growing his own wine. That just sounds like a lovely wee job to have when you retire, isn't it, John? Ah, yeah, I'm quite sure he's not the one standing in all the grapes. <laughs> <laughs> I know, no, you never know, you never know, mind you, you never know. Uh, but uh, no, no, he's got his own business uh, making bottles of wine, basically. So yeah, there you go, in Africa. Ah, uh, yeah, that's good. That's that's a good thing to do, isn't it? Quite uh, a bit of the farmer lifestyle there. Uh, relaxing. Yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Don't fancy getting the grapes stuck between your toes, and that though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't fancy that either. Or drinking the wine that people have stood on. I don't fancy that either, but anyway. No, I don't like wine. So if I was crushing grapes, I'd be in there with my... I did the samba one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. All right. Um, next on the Where Are They Now list, we've got Evander Snow. We all remember Evander. Evander Snow, 30 appearances for Celtic. One goal in those 30 appearances, John. So not prolific midfielder, Evander, defensive midfielder. Uh, of course, Evander had a heart attack in his playing career as well, didn't he? It was quite a serious heart attack near the uh, end of his career. But um, do you remember Evander, John? I remember the name. I don't remember the player. Right. I don't, I don't remember him at all, actually. I just When he says that, where are they now? There's like Evander Snow, it rings a bell. It's, just, it's one of the players that's obviously never made an impact at Celtic. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I thought he was a half decent uh, defensive midfielder, John, when they've got a game, but obviously uh, we had a good, strong team back then. But uh, he is now sentenced to long term community service, John. So he's doing community service um, for knocking out a bouncer in a nightclub, John. So he's uh, he's doing nothing really, he's doing community service. All right, you sure it wasn't a Van der Holyfield? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was quite serious, this boy that got knocked, knocked out, John. I think it was 50-50, etc., allegedly. But um, he's doing community service anyway. He was sentenced to do community, long-term community service. So, good luck to Evander anyway. Hopefully, hopefully he can uh, come through that okay. Last one on the list, John, let's bring this up. Gary Hooper, six-year-old now. Um, obviously prolific for Celtic scored the ball of the goals had a very successful career at Celtic uh, he's actually still in football John he's in the fifth tier of English football still playing as a striker at 36-37 and he's playing for Barnet FC Barnet uh, I got a hook, hook, I was going to say hook over there back to Evander Holyfield <laughs> oh, fair enough, eh? uh, 37 still playing John that's no bad eh? aye that's very good aye. he's a Celtic legend isn't he Hoops yeah brilliant what a striker we had but he, he made a wrong decision moving back down to England I think John should have stayed at Celtic and became a, a legend I feel like if he'd have stayed at Celtic I think oh, well, he's, he did his uh did his part for Celtic, didn't he? Moved on. A lot of players do that, but I, I always remember Gary Hooper, uh, great player, great striker. Yeah, yeah, exactly, mate. Okay, all right, that's where are they now for this week? There's no uh, crushing uh, grapes, no. 
No crushing grapes and there's no doing community service. <laughs> um, still playing 37, though, John. That's no bad. I suppose this obviously keeps you sale nice and fit. All right, John, comments. What have you got up there for the comments? Uh, let me just get the comments up. Yeah, uh, because I've not been on for a wee while, so I've not even looked really myself to see when many's there. All I've been looking for is the entries for the competition. And while John's doing that, I'll mention it one more time. Correct score for tomorrow's game. Livingston against Celtic. One guess each in the comments. And we'll do the draw on the post-match after the Livingston game tomorrow. One club since 1888 says, Bernardo, no more than three million. What did you think of that? Oh, aye, that was uh, the Celtic and negotiations to bring the price down from six million. Uh, he thinks three. I think three is about right. Between two, between two and four, I would say, John. Between two and four. Name two, between 2.2 2 and 2.7. Anyway, I agree. I don't think he's worth uh, the six million. Is it Benfica? Benfica, I don't think he's worth that. Anyway, Mad About Football says he wants a pen. He's been in right. for me. He has. He has. For, for the very start, he's, Mad About Football's been entering for day one, John, and never won anything. So, all I can say is keep entering, keep entering the competitions, and your day will come. All right. Anyway, next up was Rosemary. I hope Cal Max fit for the running. Uh, well, thankfully, he is. Yeah, he is. He's fit, and he's fit tomorrow, John. But he won't be playing, so he'll be there at Ibrox next Sunday. All right. Can he wait? Yeah. Uh, thanks for comment, Rosemary. Uh, Thomas Pollock says <coughs> Celtic more fight, please. More fight. Yeah. Um... Well, the last two games uh, showed plenty of fight, didn't we? The last two games. Um, we just hope that continues in the the last the remaining seven or eight games, John. So yeah, keep keep up the fight. Yeah. Right. Uh, and welcome to the the podcast, Thomas Paul. Thanks for your comment, mate. Good yeah, welcome, you. Thomas. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. Uh, we would never sell a club. The pen winner uh, and multiple frame winner says. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an interesting finish to the season. When we return after the international break, all our players returning from injury and we need to take four points from the next two Glasgow derbies. She thinks we're capable of doing it. I think so as well. We would never sell a club. Yeah, I think we'll win at Ibrox. But that's uh, all depending on uh, injuries tomorrow, etc. We do want to be picking up injuries tomorrow, that's for sure. Aye. Uh, enjoy your pen anyway. We would never sell a club. Yeah, the outstanding pens. Ballpoint, solid steel. Yeah. Yeah, you can get up to the bookies with it and get your bookie line on. Yeah, when you sell that, uh, Xander Bet Builder. Uh, it's, it's, you can't lose. You can't lose. <laughs> yeah, you can't lose, no. It certainly wouldn't be me. But anyway, <laughs> Project Floyd says, Brilliant pod again, boys. Love the lookalikes. The Joe Hart one had everyone in the band laughing. So Project Floyd's got a wee uh, Pink Floyd tribute band there. You should uh, check them out on YouTube. They've got a wee channel there. Check out their Pink Floyd tribute act. And you can go and see them because they play around Glasgow area. They all have a wee look after the podcast. Or anybody else have a wee look. Just have a wee look to uh, see how good they are. I don't even know myself. Um, all right, John, anything else? James Doran was up next saying, my score predictions for the next three games before the split. Sevco 2, Hibs 1. He was close, it was 3-1. Livingston mm -hmm. 1, Celtic 3 for the Mora. Mm -hmm. uh, Sevco 1, Celtic 2 for next week. Right. And 1, Sevco 1, Celtic 4, St Mirren 1, and Ross County 1, Sevco 2. Aye. Yeah. Yeah, probably right way. Things going to be wins all round until we face each other. It's, uh, it's all going to boil down to these last two games, I think, John. I think so. Uh, look, we start the Mora. It starts for us the Mora. We find out the Mora what's, uh, what the score is. Anyway, thanks for your comment, James. Next yeah. up was Thomas Pollock again. And he, Thomas, thinks just give two million for, let's see, give two million, just not a great player. And that's from Tommy in Dublin. Right, that's He's for Bernardo. Bernardo, I give two million, just not a great player, Tommy. Thanks, I don't think so either, Tommy. I think I say his last time he's worth between 2.4 and 2.7 million or something like that. Uh, yeah, that's I, sort of, that's slightly disagreeing. I'm sorry if there's any feedback coming through, by the way, because I can hear it myself. So we'll just plug on to go. So we're near the end of the podcast, but I think he's a decent player, John. 
Bernardo, I think he is worth the three, three and a half, personally myself. Um, and I hope we sign him, actually. I, I'd like Celtic to sign him, but I don't think he's worth the six million. I mean, I mean, the Celtic paid three million for him. I still think I want to see a lot more out of the player. Because mm-hmm. you ask me personally, he doesn't show enough. He doesn't get that involved enough. He, he never shines, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I don't even. Yeah, I've never seen Bernardo have a performance where he's actually shined for ninety minutes. Yeah, uh, you know. It's, it's... He's had decent. He hasn't had outstanding performances, but he has had decent performances. And uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think he's he's quite a solid player. He always finds a pass. He never. So, yeah, I hope he's doing well. Hi, hi. But we'll see. We'll see what happens here. But uh, that concludes the comments, Sander. I'm sure there's a lot more comments on the the wee videos for the the prizes and all that that you don't know the wee short videos, but. We only read ones out for the the podcast. Yeah, okay. All right, John, that wraps up. Um, I'm concerned about the feedback I'm hearing anyway, John, so we'll wrap up quite quickly. So good luck to Celtic on Sunday. It's, uh, we've just got to win, John, haven't we? We've just got to win the game. All right, go at them for the start. Celtic way, that's all we need to do. Go at them for the start, pin them back and keep them there for 90 minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. Nice early goal, set with the nerves. Uh, uh, just keep an eye on this referee tomorrow. It's uh, I know it's terrible to have to say that, John, but he's worth watching this guy, Robertson, isn't he? Definitely, aye. aye. Um, well, we we can't kind of control what he does, but uh, Celtic fans that are there, I think they'll give him a, no, a great reception anyway. Yeah. Yeah, okay, John, all right, that wraps it up. Good luck to the Hoops uh, on Sunday. Let's get the three points and we'll we'll catch up with the team at Ibrox next Sunday. Three points essential tomorrow, that's what we're looking for. And a quick thank you to Barry Murphy for uh, allowing us to use his um, material that he's got on the Facebook channel. Our Facebook channel is Celtic Forever Podcast and Xander John is the second channel on Facebook. So Xander John Facebook and the Celtic Forever podcast. You can catch up with us, have a wee chat, whatever, just uh, send us a wee message. Um, and uh, happy Easter to every Celtic supporter out there as well. Hope you have a nice Easter Sunday morning on Sunday, obviously. Uh, don't eat too much chocolate because we've got a big game to watch on Sunday, John. I know, I, I don't really eat chocolate, but hi, hi, happy Easter to all the Celtic fans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hope you have a nice peaceful, relaxing Easter and we'll catch you all on the post-match on Sunday, John. See you tomorrow, buddy. See you tomorrow, Xander. Hail, hail, mate. Hail, hail, pal. Mm-hmm.